I use spurs. I don't see a problem with them. Let's talk about it. My name's Katie, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. On this channel, I like to talk about all the things that people don't typically want to talk about in the horse world. And I like to have good quality discussions on your reasons why and on my reasons why. So let's get started with today's topic, spurs. There were a lot of requests for this video in my comments on the last video, so I figured let's go for it. Now. I'm gonna start growing up. So I grew up on a small family farm, for those of you who don't know, and I grew up, my dad did not like spurs. He said, you know, there's really no reason for them. As I'm growing up and developing as a horse person, I got this mentality that everybody who uses spurs is just mean, and why do you use spurs? I don't understand it. And it was a lack of education. And I feel like that happens a lot, where people don't understand something, they see something once that happens and then they automatically assume that that is bad. So I saw somebody using spurs and starfishing their horse and kicking the crap out of them. So to me that gave me like, whoa, I don't think we need spurs. Moving along in my horsemanship and learning more about why we do things and asking questions has really opened up my eyes. So I would say I started riding in spurs probably about, oh, 10 years ago, per, roughly 10 years ago. So I am not a professional on spurs by any means, but I do understand them a lot better now. And I realize that, oh, hey, you don't really you know, you don't use them to kick the shit out of your horse. And if you're using them to kick the shit out of your horse and you have the big giant starfish, well, then obviously you shouldn't be wearing them. And that just brings us back to the, any tool that you use is abusive. It all depends on who's using it. I started using spurs when I started to ask more of my horse. So my horse had been ridden primarily as a trail horse when her younger years and then she was trained professionally and then she was ridden by somebody who just got on and went and then I started riding her primarily and so in the development of this horse I found that she would be dull to leg so hi kitty so she would not move off of my leg when I needed her to and to try and do the more complex maneuvers and different things that I wanted to do, my trainer introduced me to a spur. And at first I was like, oh, I don't know about that. And I started to learn. So for me, when anything is presented new to me that I don't understand, I always like to ask questions. So the first spur that I ever rode in was a spur like this. This isn't mine. I'm again, I'm here at Versatile Horsemanship because she's got lots of stuff. <laughs> and you know, having a big riding facility and all these students, you know, she's got a lot of stuff where I can show you guys a lot of good examples. So this was, this is the actual spur that I've started to ride in. It's got the little roller on the end and it's about maybe like inch and a half. So these I really liked. Now, when you're using the spur, so if it's sitting on your boot, this is your boot and this is your horse. So let's do it this way. So here's the spur on your boot. Here's the horse's side. It actually, like if you've never ridden in spurs, it takes effort to turn your foot out and to kick them with that spur. And now, obviously, there are jerks out there who are going to misuse any type of 
tool. We've already discussed whips, we've discussed bitless bridles, we've discussed some things so far. So if you missed those videos, go check them out at the top. Um, my biggest message that I wanna get out there and get across is that any tool in the horse industry can be abusive if it's used incorrectly. And I think getting education and learning about a tool before you start using it is super important. So the spur, this is what I wrote in. And my horse has zero marks on her side. She doesn't have scarring from me spurring her or anything like that. I wear a spur and half the time she doesn't even know I'm wearing it. So when I have the spur on, like I said, if this is your horse's side, it takes effort to turn your foot all the way out and then kick them. So you really have to think about what you're doing when you have the spur on too. Like, so for me, what I typically do when I ride with a spur, here's my foot in my boot, and then I turn and I either use the roller or I just use the pressure and it's just a little extra, hey, get off my leg and move over. And I think that this sends a lot clearer of a message to your horse sometimes, especially when you ride a horse that has become dull to your leg. And it sends a nice clear message that, hey, get over and get off my leg, get your shoulder where it needs to be, get your hip where it needs to be. And this is you know, something, a tool that's used, should be used in more advanced techniques and maneuvers that you're doing with your horse. You know, I'm not saying any Joe Blow off the street should just slap on a pair of spurs because they shouldn't, they absolutely shouldn't. And they should educate themselves, figure out what's going on with your animal and then make the proper decision from there. And that's what I did and how I learned that not all spurs are abuse and not all people who use them are abusive. So then the other spur that I really like, and um, my daughter has used these in the past, and I also have these this pair too, because I kinda I like this one. It's just a little bumper spur. It doesn't have the, um, the long tine or anything on it, and it's just got little rollers. So these ones, when you, I gotta go this way. So these ones, when you're using it and you put it on the horse, you can just use the rollers to get a little bit more attention and get them to move off your leg. And I found that I really like these ones because with these ones for me, I have really long legs and I have really big feet. For only being five foot four, I'm kind of oddly shaped. So these ones for me, when I use these, I find that this longer one gets stuck up on my rear cinch. And so then it hits my rear cinch and it's not doing anything. It has no purpose other than to make a jingle when I walk. So for me, these longer ones, I've just found that these aren't as useful for me for what I'm doing. And I mean, it could probably depend on the horse too and it might change someday. I might swap back and forth, but these are my two spurs that I use. Next, English spurs, English bumper spurs. Oh, these are two different ones. You got a thicker one and a thinner one. And these just go on your English boots and then you just, I mean, I'm pushing as hard as I can and it really doesn't hurt like at all. Now if you, even if you, I mean, it, it doesn't really hurt. Um, it's just like a pressure, like a move off, move off my leg pressure. You can kinda, a, a spur's better for get off the leg and the crop's better for like the forward motion. Being well educated and knowing how to properly use them. Hi. I don't know. Say hi. Hi. Me and Clover are filming here. <laughs> Hit the road, Jack. <laughs> and I want the cat because she's good company. <laughs> Kinda love it. <laughs> I love chaos. It's so great. So anyway, back to what I was saying. 
there's a really big difference between being well educated with a tool that you're using and just grabbing something and using it because it looks cool or because everybody else does it. So we need to keep in mind when we see people using these items, you need to kind of just watch them and observe and say, hmm, why are they using that? And again, it's not our place to judge them, but unless they're being unsafe to their horse, then obviously don't just make assumptions about people and make sure you figure out if you don't understand something, ask why. I am so happy that I learned why and got educated into spurs because I was very anti-spur growing up because I was uneducated. So I am gonna go get Brandy and have her talk a little bit about spurs and what she has seen over the years and talk about the different types of spurs. She is much more qualified than me to talk about types of spurs and like naming them off because I have no idea. Like I just call this one my normal spur and I call this one my bumper spur. So this is my friend Brandy. If you guys don't know her, Hi. she has a great channel um, called Versatile Horsemanship. You can check that out in the i card above in the description below. So again, I'm here at her house today because she has lots of spurs. So I, I have lots of stuff. Yeah, lots of stuff. <laughs> It's great. So I talked a little bit about what I think about spurs and now she's gonna educate us a little bit more on spurs and the different types and uses and the why. Okay. So I talked a little bit about how you really taught me how to use spurs because mm -hmm. like I was just that like, oh my God, they're bad. And you really educated me mm -hmm. and taught me and Danny a lot about why we use them, what we use them for and how to use them. So, well, that being said, let's do this first. Yep. Um, so stand closer to me. Okay. Here's here's a good way that I explain sp spurs. And here's the thing: is I don't believe that spurs belong on somebody who is not educated in how to use them. That's so what I said. That's just what I said. <laughs> and I, I didn't hear any of what she was doing. I was doing something else. But so just like with your hands with a bit, your leg with a spur is the same thing. You've got to be educated on it. So here's an example. Katie, go ahead and lean on me. So this is my leg, okay? This is, let's pretend this is my leg and this is my horse, okay? So my horse is leaning on me. Okay, now go ahead and don't lean on me. So now lean on me. Ow. <laughs> so that's kind of the difference right there, okay? Ow. So a horse can really learn to lean on your leg because why not? So if a horse is taught to never lean against a leg, that's one thing. But when a horse learns to lean by having beginner riders, so I have a ton of lesson horses, so my lesson horses learn how to lean against a rider's leg because their timing is not right yet. When a rider doesn't understand when to release pressure, they accidentally teach the horse bad habits. Mm -hmm. So for instance, when I get on any of my lesson horses and I need to give them a good refresher and I have one that I feel is really leaning on me, I'll put on a mild spur and that way my leg's not gonna fall off from the amount of pressure that I'm needing to use to get the horse to move over. I've got a spur, my spur is just there and if the horse runs into it, they get back off of that pressure. So I'll show you on, um, I got a littler spur. Oh, they're on my boots. So <laughs> I've got a real little spur that I like. Can I run and grab that real yep. quick? Yep. Let's do. Okay, so these are my boots and my spurs. And as you can see, they have a very small little rowel on them. Now I like, um, I would actually prefer that these kind of bend down a little bit. I personally don't like to wear a larger shank spur. This is another pair that I have. I used to wear these all the time, but I really feel like they get in my way. I have really short legs, so it's hard for me because my short little legs, I feel like I'm always poking my horse, especially when I'm riding a really big barreled horse. Yeah, like, I'm happy. Telling them a little bit about that, how yeah. I have struggle with these ones because my legs are long, mm -hmm. and what happens is I end up getting caught up in the rear cinch. Yes. So that is what yes. happens with yes. me with those yes. ones. So the, those ones are kind of difficult for With the bumper us. spurs, the barrel racing spurs, the problem I have with these is I feel like even if my foot is forward, I'm still touching my horse accidentally with the spur mm. as well. So See. and with and with a regular spur, I do feel like I do feel like it teaches me bad habits though because I'm always wanting to like turn my toe out. Yep, we so about that too. I 
I'm really particular about how often I use them, what horses I use them on, all that kind of stuff. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to learn bad habits just as much as I don't want my horses to learn bad habits. So the key is to don't let your horse learn bad habits from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Then you never need this kind of yes. crap. That's so, the goal. Yeah. That's the goal, people. Okay, so the thing is with the spur, say your horse is, um, say you're going around an arena traveling to the left and your horse really is having a hard time not leaning in. So when they push their belly in, okay, we'll have Katie demonstrate. So let, we're, we're traveling. Um, you can kind of give me your shoulder. Yep. We're traveling. Now, so my leg is here, all right? Now, Katie, I want you to lean in. And she's gonna hit that spur and she's gonna be like, ow! And she's gonna move off of it. Yep. Just my leg, it's not going to affect her so much. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a horse that you know is prone to leaning in, you can prevent that and get them to stay off of your leg. Now, um, spurs are not meant to get a horse to go faster mm -hmm. by any means. The purpose of a spur is to simply move them off of your leg. It's for lateral stuff, not forward. So, and we always start with our leg first and we use a spur if it's necessary. Same with using a crop yep. or a whip, okay? Perfect. Anything else? Yeah, um, let's talk a little bit about, can you tell oh. us a little about teaching people yep. Yep, yep. how to use spurs? You know, and I don't even have my English spurs out here. These no. are all, um, these are all Just like bumpers. Yeah. I got a bunch of, I got a bunch of spurs. I have a whole collection because my advanced students who like lease my horses and such, they're allowed to wear spurs if I approve and it's for a certain situation. So this is a um, just a basic little equitation spur. This is twice as big as the ones that I typically wear. So the spurs that I wear when I jump or whatever, and they're, they basically live on my English boots, but um, they're smaller than this. So this is a this is about as big as I would ever really want them to get. Mm -hmm. Introducing a kid to spurs, or even, even an adult, because mm -hmm. um, I do this with adults too, I want them to get in the habit of using them properly, but there's gonna be mistakes that are made. So I wanna kind of protect the horse as well. I really like these. These are called spur waders, and they just got a big nub on the end. Now these, Katie will demonstrate, so lean on that. It so really it's really hurt. not a big deal, but it's mm -hmm. enough where it's like, it makes you want to kind of move off of it, especially mm -hmm. when you're talking about a horse's side. So these are nice because I'm not worried about my horses getting a spur poked on them a lot, um, but they're there to add a little bit of extra for the rider if they should need it. And once I feel like they can ride in these pretty confidently, um, then I'll let them wear other types of spurs but I just want to make sure I never want a rider grinding. We never want anybody to grind a heel into a horse anyway, but then you throw a spur on and you start grinding a heel. It's a really good way to get a horse super dull or to where they just don't enjoy their Being job. Ridden. Yeah, they mm -hmm. can start bad habits yeah. like bucking and rearing and exactly. all Exactly, a lot of things. bad things. So, but my, my personal preference, like my Appaloosa is very kind of sucked back. She was used as a lesson horse for a while. Um, but with her, I've found that the best solution is to carry a dressage whip because I'll put my leg on if she ignores it. I follow through with a little tickle from that and that's all I need. And that's really been super, super helpful. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, okay. Anything else? Nope, I think that can covers I, it. Can I touch it one more thing? Yeah, please do. So I'm going to explain the rowel a little bit because some people get all kind of geeked out about the rowel. Um, the purpose of a rowel is to roll it, okay? That's why there's a roll, a rowel on there. This is where a lot of the misunderstandings of starfishing a horse comes from, I think. Yeah. Not that people don't, because there's, like I said, there's idiots out there, but the purpose of the rowel is definitely yeah. So the starfish. look at the difference in these. Is that working out? Look at the difference in these rolls, okay? So this one's a little bit more blunt, all right? This one's got more pokies, but the closer, the closer the little bumps are together, the milder it's gonna be. And just by simply rolling it in your finger, you can tell. Um, but I wanna tell a quick little story. I was barrel racing um, 
I barrel raced for many, many years. And um, when I was a kid, I had a really great barrel horse. And I didn't really understand how to use leg properly at that time. And this was a really eye-opening experience for me. So with barrel racing, you'll see people really like, some people are really kicking their horses hard. And mm -hmm. to the point where if there's like no music or anything playing, you can hear the horse going, uh, 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 every time that they get kicked. Mm -hmm. And that's them protecting themselves and kind of hunching like that every time you hear that grunt sound. And that's terrible, absolutely terrible. Um, and what is really important to understand is the act of just moving your legs to get a horse to go forward. It's not the kicking part. We don't want to kick our horse to get him to go forward. We want there to be movement there and energy to get our horse to go forward. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say this. I could today ride in a spur like this and be confident that I'm not going to hurt my horse. But when I was a teenager, I was barrel racing and I used to kick my horse and I would kick him with this, with these spurs, this exact spur to be, to be honest. I got off my horse one day, both sides, he was bleeding and he had a cut. And that was the biggest eye-opening experience for me and I felt like garbage for doing that. So since that day, I have been so cautious as to how I use spurs and in what situation. Mm -hmm. So if you're a barrel racer out there and you're kicking your horse to get it to go forward and you're wearing spurs, I want you to take a really, like, really seriously think about that mm -hmm. and say, is this the right thing to do? Mm -hmm. Okay? Spurs are meant for lateral movement. The spurs are not meant to make a horse go faster. Yep. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's important, like Brandy just shared that story, I think it's important that we share the things that we've screwed up on because you know what? That's how people learn. And if we can learn from each other instead of learning from doing it ourselves, that's even better. Well, and a big thing too, let me just chime in here again. A big thing too is don't hate on people for making those mistakes. Yep. So I teach hundreds of people how to ride in a year and I've got all these kids in my barn and I'm not going to shame them for the things that they're doing. I was that kid at one point who was just learning. I didn't understand how to use spurs, but I'm not going to go and tell people, hey, you're wrong for using spurs altogether but it's good to educate people on how to use them because there's people who, you know, I was that person. I didn't understand until I learned from my own personal experience. So mm -hmm. don't shame people, just yep. educate. And ask questions. Figure out why. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so that was Brandy from Versatile Horsemanship. Again, check out her link in the description below if you want to learn a little bit more from Brandy. I, you know, I really appreciate Brandy sharing that story with us because I think that that's important for people to understand that to be able to continue your horsemanship journey, you need to go out and ask questions and learn and educate yourself. And don't be ashamed of your mistakes. You know, talk about them and figure out what you can do better to make things better. So if you guys have any experiences that you have with spurs, what your thoughts on spurs are, and you would like to share that, please do so in the comments below. Remember to be respectful, let's have a good discussion, and let's try to learn more together. So guys, that's it for my video for this week. Make sure again to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can stay updated on the latest videos. Again, the tool is about who is using it. That is what creates the abuse and we need to start having conversations, discussions, asking why, and educating ourselves so that we can continue our horsemanship journey. Thanks for watching.